Okay. Um, hey everyone, welcome. I always clap, but you know when they do the thing on the tape, you know, like that, what are those things called? Those oh, yeah. things. Action. Yeah, action. <laughs> um, welcome back to So From Home, hosted by me, Nikita, where I interview my classmates studying fashion at Edinburgh College of Art. And today I'm joined by Sophie. So Sophie, if you want to give me a sentence about your collection and then we can jump in. Okay, hello everyone. Um, so my collection kind of stems from like personal identity, um, looking at sort of feminism, female empowerment. I feel like there's been a lot of that, but I kind of quite like it because all of us like really girl power. <laughs> um, and then kind of look at like a lot of like linear contours, construction, um, and like the actual making is a big thing for my collection. Um, look, yeah, sort of looking at um, you know, the female body lines, um, and then, yeah, sort of specialising in knitwear and tailoring, started tailoring, and it's sort of, like, phased out slightly, <laughs> but um, tailoring fabrics and then mostly knitwear. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so, um, so, yeah, this is just, like, sections from my design book, but this is my concept board. So I kind of started, um, I was looking at like, uh, basically my starting point was Grayson Perry, weirdly. I just like love him, think he's great. Um, <laughs> and he has this whole, like so many theories about like personal identity and his whole sort of thing about alter egos and like layers of identity. So I kind of took that and then thought about myself and like what makes up like the layers of my own identity so mm -hmm. that was like a lot of that's where the kind of like female empowerment comes in you know power dressing tailoring um all of that um so thought about that and then so yeah so Grayson Perry um his sort of idea was that like he has this alter ego who's Claire um and then he talks about yeah these like layers of identity and like the different aspects of your life that you pull to like create the layers of your identity, which I really liked. And um, that was kind of like the core of what I wanted my collection to be about because I wanted it to be like personal. And I've had one of these, I don't know about anyone else, but it's, you're so critical as a designer and I often like make something and I'm like, I, I don't even like it that much. And I was so like determined, obviously, because you want to like what you've made. I was so determined to have like a really personal collection because I was just like, I just want to love it, like myself. Um, so and that was really important to me. Something that you would wear yourself because I've had that through years, but I, I don't know if it's a thing of, you know, when you're staring at something for so long, mm -hmm. after a while you start to become really critical and you don't like it. And yeah. I think creative people are so critical of everything. Yeah. Maybe. But you know when you're talking about personal identity and then you have to think about yourself, so what makes the layers of Sophie? What have you learned about yourself in that? Well, that's a good question. That's the thing. I feel like you have to really, I like did some soul searching and I was like, God, who, who am I? And then I was like, God, what do I care about? And it's so hard because I think it's always like, what are your different interests outside of fashion? But it sounds really like classic, but my whole like my main interest is fashion. So then I'm like, well, what else do I have? And that was something I really struggled with because I was like, from such a young age, my, because up until you do fashion at university, it's like not really a subject, it's a hobby. Yeah. So like fashion was my hobby. And so then I was like, well, what else do I have? And blah, blah, blah. And it was like, female empowerment is so, I mean, I feel like it is for everyone, for like any girl, especially nowadays, like, when it's such a hot topic it's like that is at the like core of who I am and I care like so much about it and then for me it's like tailoring um Savile Row like that was for most of like well actually it's changed so much but at the start of when I started doing fashion that's what I wanted to do like tailoring and then textiles so that's kind of where my knitwear came in um and yeah it was just kind of like exploring different avenues but the main sort of core one was like female empowerment and then textiles and I've kind of like just tried to match the two together um, I think it's really important to have female designers who do advocate for female empowerment because a lot of the time you see male designers doing women's wear but yeah. I've said this before where you you should kind of do what you know often yeah. and as a man they can never fully speak from a, a female's point of view so to have us as women advocating for female empowerment we understand our own bodies or what we might yeah. like about our bodies so I do think it's important because it's it's a new age of us women coming up and being like no this is actually how we feel yeah. as women. 
yeah I get it kind of like annoys me I'm like well, I don't want a boy telling me <laughs> what, what I what they think I would feel good in it's like well I know myself like I know what I like I know what I feel comfortable in and feel good in so like yeah what exactly. I do is reflection about that basically yeah because they're doing it more from like a male gaze of being like we know what looks yeah. good to everyone but you're doing it more from what looks good but also a comfort point of view which I think is important and also going off what you were saying about oh like what other hobbies do we have I thought that I was like oh what would I do or what hobbies would I have because everything centered around art but then mm. loads of people don't even have hobby so the fact that we have one which we can base our career on I think is quite yeah cool. yeah completely but I just remember always being like because the tutors and like the way you build like a concept is always like you know what are your interests and it sounds it makes me sound like what I have like no other interests but <laughs> I remember god I'm like oh god but I remember so clearly like I think it was like Claire or one of like our third year tutors sitting me down when I because I really struggle with concepts like I don't see myself as a particular like, conceptual person I'm like a I, I picked fashion like I wanted to do fashion because I love making clothes like I love construction and the technical side of it I don't think my head is as like conceptual as I would love it to be mm. um so I remember like speaking to Claire about that and she was like well you know yeah what are your like hobbies and passions and I'm like passion like that that is it like it's my literal life <laughs> I don't have time for anything else. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we actually don't, to be fair. <laughs> it's because also the thing is, you know, my dad used to say to me actually, he was like, he he wasn't sure if I was gonna go into fashion because I've always said I really wanted to do it, but he was like, You, it, you don't live and breathe it. And I was like, mm. well, you know, when I switch off sometimes I don't want to live and breathe the thing that I'm doing 24 7 because like we'll still be on our phones for example and like are you, I'm sure you do this where you'll still be screenshotting outfits or you'll still be yeah. looking on at other designers and that's when we're switching off so you kind of are but he was like no but like you know some people when they're 15 just that's what they want to do and they do it till like 12 p.m and I was like I need a bloody break sometimes yeah I had that so much God, I remember someone saying that to me I think it's like a friend's mum who did art at uni and then she was like mm, you don't really sort of seem like you live and breathe fashion and I was like that doesn't mean that I'm not like allowed to do that um okay so this was like probably a core um so I basically from the female empowerment and feminism I looked at like different feminist movements um sort of like throughout the ages and like how it sort of will, there'll be a big movement and then it will die down and then it will come up again and like there's been such like a in waves I feel like a feminism and like it's definitely one going on now you know with like me too and all of that um but in the 90s there was like the riot girls um which I just was like that's so cool <laughs> um, and loved it and loved the idea of like protests through music and like the whole aesthetic and that was something that I really wanted to like include in my collection and it linked with like my tailoring as well because it was all kind of like you know waistcoats and like a bit grungy and that kind of like slightly undone like thing which I quite liked and also you'll see it as well later on but the balaclavas I was like obsessed with that and I was like right well I've got to have balaclavas in my I collection. saw them I'm excited to yeah. see them in your knitwear yeah um yeah I mean I had no idea they could look bizarre but I quite I love them so um so yeah I kind of wanted that like protest in my collection and that was kind of where the balaclavas come into that but so that was quite an important part for me mm -hmm. um and then obviously power dressing like it's got to come into it at some point like you know tailoring and feminism what did you get power dressing um but I was kind of looking at like the emotional side of it and like where it what it means and that again was like a, sort of quite important with like identity I feel like power dressing doesn't necessarily mean like massive shoulders and you know yeah. putting that on like it, it's something different completely different to each person you know it could be like some power dressing for someone could be putting on a really like pink frilly dress um for me it is like it is suits I love suits pinstripes tailoring but that's always been who I am so that was kind of like I looked at power dressing you know from the suffragette movement to you know like where we are you know people in politics and like how it's used um 
so yeah that was very important to me um, I'm quite similar to you in that sense about the power dressing that I tend to go for more suit kind of vibes and blazers if I'm feeling quite like want to feel powerful but did you find it quite difficult at first because I did I found it quite difficult to understand I guess when a woman is wearing like really frilly flowery girly like hyper feminine dresses at first I never thought oh that's that's power dressing or that makes you feel powerful as a woman I, I just did it because I thought it just fed into the narrative that we had to be yeah. super soft and delicate but then the more I read like the more I understood actually it's different for everyone did you find that quite difficult to understand at first yeah and it's it annoys me like it it annoyed me because well I, I annoyed myself because yeah. so my first lineup was literally just suits and I remember Lindsay our tutor saying like you know it doesn't just have to be like powder dressing doesn't just have to be suits and then I was annoyed at myself for basically designing like men's clothes yeah. for women to make that power dressing I was like oh this is like as if it, we have to be masculine in order for it to be power dressing and then she was like no 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 like so it's quite funny how like my lineups have evolved and now I've got this like super skin tight dress, like knitted dress that's like re really like form hugging. And it's like, that's completely different to like massive suits, which are, I originally thought was all power dressing could be. So it's quite funny how like my view of, of it has changed so much. And so my color palette is literally just pulling imagery from like all over my research um, and like all sort of like, I got so donated these fabrics the ones in the top corner um so those were like suit fabrics that I got donated and then again I was like well I want a collection of like colors that I love and green is like my favorite color in the world always has been always will be so I was like oh, it's gotta be it's gotta be green and then kind of just was like pulling images um that had green in it and that I liked and then sort of basically my color palette stemmed from like suit fabrics green and then like it's got pink as well so um I love this again it was like all just like I want it to be really personal I want it to be really me um so that was that also um, you know there's some like um weird like I don't know I I think look it up but there's a, there's some I don't know if it's I guess it's scientific research behind green because you know on websites you know when they have more green in certain areas um people's eyes are drawn to it because like in our heads it's like yes so like you know traffic lights are yes and go ahead um yeah I I because my dad had, was having his website redone last year and so he, they were putting more green around it and they were like there's actually a reason why because our brains are more drawn to going because like my I've got loads of green um jumpers and like a lot of green clothing and I never realized mm. I, I I was like to my mom I didn't think I loved green but my most mm. of my wardrobe is quite like green color palette yeah. and that's yeah, yeah quite interesting that our eyes think green's like yes and to yeah. go for green that makes so much that's sense I, just never, <laughs> I, I was the child that had like the green hoodies and like the green like all green um but because my parents just like couldn't get me out of it so I was like well my collection's got to be green <laughs> so yeah and then I went on so I was um research because this sort of fed into like the way I was twirling as well so like everything was like very heavy on the construction I was like lots of seams like all of my jackets and stuff were like I think they started off something ridiculous like, it was like an 18 panel jacket and then the tutors oh, were like chill out you need to like <laughs> really get like you need to calm down <laughs> um but anyway that's where all the kind of like linear contours started coming from and I started looking at just like the female form and like also it felt really obvious to like look back at like female it was because the, the female nude is like has been represented in art like forever um you know it's like renaissance art blah, blah blah and it was like I wanted to look at the evolution of like how it's now like portrayed in art obviously it used to be like super sexualized and like objectified yeah, yeah. and now it's like but also where the line was between you know like it like it being an objectified image and like it being Great. celebrated yeah you know what I mean I, I that was something else that I really wanted to kind of like think about because obviously you can have like a sexy female nude but like it, it's almost like if it was like done by a woman then it's a celebration but if it's like from the male gaze then it's it's not like, yeah exactly. it's not it was really weird but I just wanted it to be like again sort of draw from that and all of my like lines 
that and like construction lines ended up kind of being like following the contours of the body so sort of wanted to research that and then yeah my research kind of just then went into like my knitwear um just like graphic bright it was all like that was kind of what I'm always drawn to is just like bright colors really graphic like really fun I wanted it to be playful um so kind of was just like drawing imagery for my knitwear um and then yeah sort of like the tailoring and the construction side of things um was also really important and that was also something that like Lindsay our tutor was like really keen that I kind of like really honed in on and like knew what I was doing because she was like okay fine you can like say you're doing tailoring but it's really important to actually understand tailoring rather than just be like I'm gonna make a suit mm-hmm. um so I kind of researched quite a lot about like the details and the construction side of that as well um, well how have you found how have you found learning about tailoring because obviously when we look at it all it's just suits but like the actual construction it's a lot more than what it seems isn't it yeah yeah it's so time consuming and it's so yeah it's it it took up a lot because so last term because originally I was actually like tailoring that's what I wanted to do and the whole knitwear thing actually I don't even know how I ended up doing knitwear I just sort of like (laughs) it's so weird I didn't do I barely did it last year and then Claire sort of like sent an email at the start of the year being like I've got you down as like a potential like knitwear person and I was like yeah I could do a bit of knitwear like it would be quite fun and sort of like imagined a couple of things having some knitwear in it and then it all being tailored like most of it being tailored and then like as it's evolved I think I've got more knitwear pieces than I'm looking at my lineup on my wall um more knitwear pieces than tailoring so and that is to be fair because the tailoring was it was really hard but yeah so this I mean my knitwear is not it's not you know super like experimental it was just all about like it's it's all punch cards and stripes and again like you know playing with pinstripes and like ribs color was just massively important and like yeah just like the emotional like just like having a lot of fun with it that was kind of what I was doing I, my, I bought a knit machine um which then actually <laughs> actually was broken well not broken but so on all of the um punch cards you see like these stripes down yeah. there that is a glitch in my machine that just I couldn't fix and I was like oh my god I've just spent all of this money on a knitting machine and it will cost more to get it serviced than it would to have bought it and so I spoke to Clara I was like what do I do like all of my punch like all of my net is punch cards and she was like just like pretend that it's on purpose <laughs> I was like sweet okay yeah that's great that <laughs> so, quite cool yeah and like no one really knows well now everyone well, now knows. they do <laughs> <laughs> they had, no one knew um so I kind of just went with that and also I quite liked it because it was like linked to all my pinstripe stuff and it kind of just like ended up working really well and now that like, uni have now given me a machine but I actually I now have to use my machine because I need the glitch on that one um so yeah um and then the other kind of yeah important part of my materials was um the like suit fabric so I just emailed loads and loads of mills um in like October September I think um and got I think I emailed about 30 people and two replied um yeah it's like that doesn't it with the is it it's not heartbreaking but it kind of is because did you do yeah. when you send all the emails like because when I, I check my emails more than social media now but you check oh, like refreshing your email every five minutes yeah I was obsessed um but no this guy it was so it was so random I found some like website that had a list of mills and I just like fired off these emails and this guy was like oh my god like my wife did fashion at ECA like yeah I'll send you stuff I was like what are the chances it's so cool. weird yeah. you just like if you just ask anyway so that actually basically it massively influenced all of my textiles because I was just like okay well I've got these random suit fabrics like what can I do with it mm-hmm. um so just kind of did lots of like stitch like experimentation like appliquing them on top of each other just at home which is like my therapy I love you could like sit me on a sewing machine for like hours and I have the time of my life so it was like the like the perfect (laughs) textiles for me um just sewing them on top of each other um so yeah 
I love that though because I think a lot of people who do fashion design can't wait to start just like doing the design rather than actually the manufacturing process so that's so nice that you enjoy all yeah. of the aspects well you seem to enjoy more the making process than actually yeah it's really weird I like I love I love I I do like the design <laughs> god it's so bad I do like the design more so now than I did in like first and second year and first and second year I just wanted to be like making clothes all the time um but yeah, no, I've always, I think, like, I just, I think it's because I did textiles at school. I never did art. Oh, so yeah, that makes more sense then. I don't have, like, an art background at all. It was always been a sewing background. And, like, I did textiles because I had I, I had got given a sewing machine when I was, like, nine. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm way more comfortable sewing than, like, drawing. Drawing, I freeze up and, like, I can't like get what I want that's in my head like on paper so I um, guess it's yeah. just practice though isn't it from from both because mm. the fact that you've been doing that from so young means that you kind of knew what you wanted to do when you were young whereas most of us who came from like more the fine art background w won't have the skill set that you have in terms of making and the experience mm -hmm. you have or also have known as early on as you did and then this is all of my like development stuff so um this was lit one but it's now lit three I think I, it's all moved around so much but this was a jacket that's going to be like in the felted knit which I actually don't think was on that page um but yeah battled with this I think I've made this like three times four times I mean just over and over again and battled with like Lindsay and just like opinions that's what's really hard as well I, I don't know about you but yeah. the striking the balance between like doing what you think looks good and doing what the tutors think will get you a good degree uh, it's really hard um because I've I don't know have you had advice from our previous students from other years because um I when I like when I was starting this yeah I spoke to other people from I was just speaking to them from other years they were like oh how are you finding it and I was like yeah yeah really good and a few of them had said to me oh, stick with your gut kind of thing and do what makes you happy because at the end of the day it's your it's your project but then I, I in my head I'm thinking yeah but I have to strike a happy medium because yeah, it's yeah. like first year second year third year where it doesn't count it actually counts for a degree so <laughs> yeah like so it is it yeah. is really it is difficult to know what like whether something's a direction or yeah. if it's a bit of advice because if it's advice I guess you can decide what you want to do but if it's a direction it's you can't really you just, yeah I don't know it's hard but it's so really what hard. what was it with this particular jacket that you were struggling with the uh she wanted it to be like a bomber jacket um and it's to have all of those like stylistic elements of a bomber jacket like the collar and the like elasticated cuffs and the elasticated hem and I just that was not like, like this yeah so it started off as this bomber jacket well once we kind of spoke about it and I made it and I was like I don't I don't want it to be that and then kind of had to like redesign the whole thing and like completely change it cause, and then just sort of said sorry but it's not that anymore <laughs> and just kind of like hope that she forgot that it was supposed to that she really wanted it to be a bomber jacket um so yeah that was just and also because I wanted to do it in the knitwear I was like this is just not going to work for me this is so um, now what have you ended up going for it's not a bomber jacket is it now it's not a bomber jacket it's just it's just a big jacket it just doesn't have the like details it's got it's got like a big collar there's the cuffs have all gone the elasticated mm -hmm. hem's gone it's still a zip jacket but it's like a felted knitted jacket and are you happier with that one than the bomber jacket? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never wanted it to be a bomber jacket. I was kind of just like, oh, okay, I'll try it. And then made it and was like, I don't really like this. But Also, I guess it's good to just like, as in, because art's so subjective and especially fashion, everyone has what they kind of like, what they think's right. It's yeah. quite good in the sense to have opinions which don't agree with yours because it challenges you and then yeah. either it makes you realize that oh okay maybe this person's idea was a cool idea and then I can build on that or it makes you realize no actually I really like what I was initially going with so it either strengthens what you believe or kind of advances you into a different I guess mm. path so it's yeah I guess yeah. it's good 
you a challenge because now you're happy with your things own. that it kind of yeah it, it's worth experimenting exactly but like, yeah um and then trousers I've, I think these were like again so these trousers these paneled ones were all like the whole linear contoury thing and like just having like a, a lot of my collection is actually is it anymore yeah there's a lot of paneling um and like contrast <laughs> I don't even know at this point it's changed so many times um there's a lot of like paneling and contrast paneling and stuff and this was going to be like a quilted tailored trouser a lot of also my referencing so like this used to be uh Lindsay was like you should make it hot pants because all of like it was a get with the like riot girls and also I looked at a lot of like 1950s like housewife imagery and like the swimwear that are all like hot pants so originally Lindsay was like you should make hot pants and then I was like oh this doesn't really feel like legit enough does that mean like it so doesn't feel right for you, yeah, yeah. it doesn't feel right and I was like I don't just want to make like mini hot pants like I could do more with a bottom with a whole bottom half than just a pair of hot pants mm -hmm. so then a lot of my trousers all have like little references to hot pants like these ones the seams are yeah, hot pants so cool. and then like the back of these panelled ones like the panels come in where like pants come across your bum <laughs> it's like little references like that so that kind of all of my trousers have like referencing to like underwear basically in pants um also you know the the whole like contour vibe and even because even when you do those kind of panels it's actually really really flattering for mm. every single figure because it kind of gives yeah. that kind of like hourglass shape and then you know even mm. the the jacket with the panels where it goes in it makes you look like you've got a narrow um a narrow waist yeah. well so. that was the idea all of them like that those panels was all like really exaggerating the like female form without actually making like stupidly small clothes like stupidly small like waists because that's yeah. just doesn't not realistic for anyone um, and it's not going to make you feel good about yourself if you're trying to squeeze into a jacket that's got a tiny waist like I'd rather panel it out so it's like referencing that but without actually having to like make clothes that aren't going to fit anyone um so yeah um and then this was a dress this was when I started kind of like taking out suits and making dresses this dress was a bit of a disaster when I made it in calico I think it looked like a sort of like Victorian costume I didn't really know what it was supposed what I even wanted it to be and over time it oh and then I made it and then I ta like tailored that in at the bottom and had this like whole huge like hips again with the whole like female form and then kind of made it and actually it was just like the most unflattering thing ever. And Lindsay was like, yeah, considering your like collection is all about, supposed to be about like female empowerment, like no one's gonna wanna wear that and like no one's gonna feel good wearing it. I was like, that's yeah. fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why it then eventually became this like really like skin tight knitted dress. And then it's like got a drapey knitted jacket over the top that's like completely changed, but I battled with this so much. Um, and then my showpiece, like final coat, again, changed so much. Like thought I kind of, thought I like nailed it last term, you know, and you like handed in the twirls oh, at Christmas. Yeah. And I was, like, it was like, sweet, I nailed it. And then I like, came back after the Christmas break and was like, Mm. I haven't <laughs> just like really need to rethink this whole thing <laughs> so that's changed a lot and again it's like got the like side panels and like the kind of like curved hips um so I'm making look one three five and six I love the colors on look five so much and also actually did you say one one yeah two is it two as well no one and three one, three. Oh, so three is that is the, okay so that's like an adaptation of that dress isn't it mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. yeah and so instead is is it one whole dress or is it a coat and a dress a jacket and a dress it's, it's like it's like a coat jacket coat but knitted so I don't really know what that makes it I guess it kind of makes it a cardigan but I, but that doesn't sound great so yeah <laughs> it's like a jacket knitted jacket again um <laughs> But this is one of those things where you draw your knitwear and then obviously it, it all is going to like drape completely differently. Um, so I haven't quite got as far as like working out how I'm reinforcing all of my knitwear and how it's going to like actually sit. So these are 
what I'd like them to look like in my <laughs> illustrations. <laughs> It is hard when you when you illustrate and you're like, oh, this would look so cool. But then in reality, when you actually do it on on the stand, because I've definitely had that where I'm like, oh, I love I love the drawing and that would look really cool in reality. But then when you actually make it, you're like, oh, it doesn't look how it would on an actual figure. But, so that is a Hoover from like 1950s, like housewife imagery that I did. So this print I designed like, again I think in like October mm -hmm. um and then completely like lost print um and then because I was like ended up doing but going a bit like knitwear crazy um completely like got rid of like all of the print that was in my collection and then yeah really randomly like when we had our formative a couple of weeks ago um and I spoke to Lindsay and she was like how would you feel about she was like do you she was like am I right in thinking you had print design in here at some point I was like god yeah that was like six months ago and she was like how would you feel about sort of like reintroducing it so it's not actually sketched into my lineup but they will just be like tailored shirts okay like quite small but it's just like keeping like a bit more tailoring in there um and like layering it up so it's like balaclava which is I think like a knit it's going to be like a knitted mini dress and then with a shirt over the time I mean I don't know it all sounds mental at the moment but um, <laughs> and I'm worried like actually a bit of like painful on the eyes I think it looks cool also I kind of think it's quite it's quite fun to like mishmash everything together because you know when some mm. people put an outfit together because there's this that there was this woman I can't remember her name but she wore like leopard print boots and then a different kind of leopard print coat and then a floral bright dress and you see it all together and you're like you never would have thought to put all that together but when it is it looks amazing so it'd be the same thing yeah. with your collection well that's what I was kind of like I was like oh god I've kind of gone for it now like I've done all these bright fabrics I kind of just need to like commit and accept that it is going to be a bit like wacky and bright but that I wanted it to be anyway so there's no harm I and mean, like you know we can all deal with a couple of clashing prints like it's not going to be the end of the world <laughs> <laughs> I quite like it so it's all right um but no I mean these are these are I've just ordered samples for them so they're due to arrive any day and that will kind of be the decider okay. as to whether they actually work or not I think yeah a lot of people sometimes take fashion a bit too seriously and obviously fair enough like you want to look good but I think you've done it in a way that people can look good and have so much fun with it and I think mm. You seemed really unsure when we were speaking at the beginning that you weren't sure if there was a clear concept or identity, but I think whether you realise it or not, yours has such a strong and coherent voice throughout the whole collection, whether you meant for it to or not, it's actually fallen into that way of not being, you know, like where you've got inspiration from too many things, like it's set in the right path. Do you think that you've found that? I do I do think it's like I, I do think it's got like a strong nar narrative and I like it says what I wanted it to say mm -hmm. but I think the thing with like the con with the concept was just like I think some people are like genuinely born to be concept designers like they come up with the most like amazing concepts that would just never even cross my mind like <laughs> and I just I was always a bit like I don't think I can like I, I'm not like coming up with crazy concepts um and that was something that I was always really worried about. But I do think, I mean, in the end, I love, I really like my collection and it says what I want it to say. And it's like got all the meaning in it that I wanted it to, but it just doesn't necessarily have like, as you said, like people take fashion so seriously and always think it's got to be like super conceptual and super like deep rooted. And it's like, I just wanted to make a collection that I loved, had loads of fun making and that like, says what I wanted it to say um without there necessarily being like a super super deep hidden meaning in it do you know what I mean yeah it's pressure from students seeing other students work more than just seeing designer designers work like established designers but I don't think everyone has to be super conceptual or there has to be a really emotional concept I think it varies for everyone and if that's the type if that's the designer you are and you want your customers to have fun with it that's equally mm -hmm. as credible as someone who's done something that's maybe more emotional and deep-rooted in what they believe because either way 
it's meant fashion is meant to be something of like self-expression and how you feel yeah. and if that's what you wanted to get from it because at least you're not ending up with a collection which you dislike that like I'm sure you would wear a lot of this stuff in your collection so that's so important isn't it yeah I mean mine ended up being so like textiles but not textiles based but the materials that I was given actually like affected so much like the design of my collection and I think I wasn't really expecting that at all so like obviously like silhouette and you know your designs like all originally stems from your concept and like your research and then actually once you start introducing fabrics and materials and like the fabrics I got donated which I didn't even have a choice in what they looked like yeah um you know that actually then then ended up influencing what my collection looked like far more than I thought that it would as in like the design yeah, yeah. Of it kind of all falls into place doesn't it because I think sometimes I tend to overthink most things in life <laughs> but um I don't know if that's a creative thing I think loads of us overthink a lot of stuff but in terms of when it comes to designing I think like for example the fact that you kind of had to adapt with whatever fabrics you were given you didn't mm. overthink and it all it all falls into place and I think a lot of people sometimes think it doesn't but it does you get there mm -hmm. and sometimes okay your graduate collection you want it to go right but for other years it will go wrong and I think it's yeah. better for it to have gone wrong before so like in previous years than to go mm -hmm. wrong in your final year because you can't learn if you don't go wrong in certain mm -hmm. places so that's the same when you were twirling so firstly you must be very quick at making to be able to make that many twirls and that comes from you having that background as well in making but do you think you making that many twirls really helped you get to the point where you have yeah completely I like I have to see it made to like know whether I like it or not I can't I because because I'm not a sketch heavy person I've never like I I freeze up at the thought of just like really quickly like quickly sketching something down is not I can't even I can't do that like I still use a light box like no shame I, I need it <laughs> so I have to like make the things in order to see what uh, the twirling was so important to me and like yeah it gets a, like after a while you know it's a lot but and I would love to like have a bit more sketch involved in like my making process but it was so important for like me because I can't just sketch something down and for it to look exactly how I like I can't sketch something and know that's how it's going to look 3D mm -hmm. in 3D so that's quite yeah. good for other people to know as well because they think there's a lot of pressure on thinking that you have to be able to sketch really well or do so mm -hmm. many sketches or sketch really quickly but for Sophie for example like for you your form of sketching is actually sketching on a stand, if that makes sense. So yeah, I don't know. I think there's so many ways of doing things and sometimes it feels like there's only one way or there's only one right way, but I think it's what's right for you at the end of the day, because you have to, we all have to get to one point. And if you get there, how you've got yeah. there has worked for you anyway. Yeah, no, yeah, I completely agree. It's weird, I always thought, you know, and don't get me wrong, I do think sketch is incredibly important yeah. and I really wish, I really, really wish that I, it came more naturally to me, but if it does, like, if it doesn't, like, that's just like, you know, I, I was kind of like, oh God, I was just waiting. I feel like first to third year, I was just waiting to suddenly become good at sketching. <laughs> I was like, it will come, it will come. And it just like, to be honest with you, never really has. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm sort of at the end of fourth year now and it's not a natural thing for me to sketch, but you know you find ways around it and whether it's like collage as you said or like sketching over over twirls or like you, you there are other ways of doing design development and it doesn't have to be just like taking a design from your head and like perfectly sketching it on paper because often that doesn't work yeah I think it is it's good to be able to do both but mm. that's not realistic for everyone and also there are some areas that some people are going to be stronger at so to make sure that's the strongest it can be is so important so for example with you in the making that's the strongest it can be which means you have the ability to do the 10 panel jacket whereas someone who maybe is better at sketching might not have the ability to do that so mm. in the design world there's so many sectors everyone can go into and we will fall into what's right for us at the end of the day yeah.
yeah exactly like I honestly maybe this is a bad thing to say but I don't see myself as being a fashion designer like and and that feels like sacrilege when I'm doing a fashion design course <laughs> but I just don't think that I don't I don't see myself being like a fashion designer um and I don't well, okay not yeah thing. what do you see yourself being then because that is I was going to ask you that later but like far more um in the fabric like sourcing that kind of area but yeah or I don't know like from internships there's like certain like you can still I say from internships from the one internship that I've done <laughs> um I was like in the product development team which wasn't you know I wasn't designing the clothes but you're still like there with them and you're still I was in you know fittings and I was you know sourcing fabrics and got to do so much that involves making the collection but I wasn't you know you're just not the mind behind the design and for me like that's I get all of my like satisfaction is from like making clothes and like seeing them develop and change and it's not necessarily from like designing something amazing like I, I love I do really love designing now and obviously it's more satisfying when you're making something that you've also designed yeah but personally I find like literally going from like a 2d pattern like to a 3d piece of clothing and like working out how to get there is where I like get all of my satisfaction like a lot of my satisfaction from that I think that's that's cool though that you've realized that and acknowledged that because I think I think that's what's so exciting about doing an actual fashion degree is that fashion degree doesn't mean you're just designing. We mm. we do the making, so you could be into tailoring or you could be into drape, you could be into flat pattern cutting or pattern mm. cutting on the stand. You could be mm. print-led, knitwear-led, like more into actually design. There's so many yeah, areas so instead of maybe doing a specialist degree in one of them that like, mm. so, like you've learned that what would be more tailored towards you and mm. everyone gets to learn what they're more strong at because we've got to try everything. Yes, it's quite pressurizing having to all do it all at the same time and it's <laughs> intense but at least yeah. we've had the opportunity to be like yes no yeah. like we can cross it off earlier yeah. yeah exactly and like even with like design book like yeah I know it's not the same as like a graphic design degree but it's like a little taster of like you know using yeah. you know CAD and stuff and again it's like you you you'll know whether you like it or not and some people hate that side of fashion design and hate you know facial <laughs> Oh, sorry photoshop and design <laughs> illustrator um but like i quite enjoy it and that's another thing that i wouldn't know that i would love like enjoy unless you're forced to kind of like do all these different things and that's why i do think this degree is so good your concept it's been really strongly heavily focused on female empowerment why especially now today's age we're 22 years old are you 22 or 23 22 Okay, so we're 22 years old. We're women now. Why do you think it's so important, especially now? Because you said that it comes through waves and currently we're at that wave again. So yeah, what would you? I just, I don't, I can't, I can never like quite put into words why I care about it so much. I like had this conversation with my flat last night and it just makes me angry. Like it sounds awful. Like I'm some like angry feminist, which I, I, <laughs> I don't know I just think it, I'm so fed up of of it of everything not being equal like I'm so bored of it. it it annoys me more than anything else and I'm just like why can no one seem to like why can men not quite understand how great women are I mean obviously I'm biased but I think we have so much like potential and like there's just so much that we can do mm -hmm. and it's got apps like it just it, yeah it just it just annoys me when I actually think about like you know gender pay gap it just you know why can't we walk home without feeling safe like what it's so deep rooted now and I in in society and everyone's kind of like and I'm so glad that it's all coming up now and that everyone is like finally getting angry about it because mm -hmm is something to be angry about and I was just like I need to like vent this out I think you know if someone were to catch me on a rant which you pretty much have now I would just be like this is not fair and it's so unfair and I was kind of like okay I've got a whole collection to make this is a great opportunity to just like channel all of that um like frustration um 
so yeah I don't know if it's I like therapy it, but... yeah you know you did it is it's like <laughs> therapy putting it into a collection and I mm. completely agree with, with what you're saying it is it's not even upsetting it's tiring now it's got to the point where it's actually exhausting to have to speak about and it's just it's I feel more angry than upset because like you said walking home it's like that's it it's not things that men have to think about as much in that sense yeah. when it comes to walking home um and I think I know I know like when we've had debates at my school for example not even debates talks about it and um I had a boys school we had the boys school next door um so they would come over and I no, a lot of them felt like we, we were targeting them from what we were saying or they, they would mm. feel like the anger is misdirected and I think that's why a lot of men have an issue with femin feminism but it just mm. you just have to listen to the root it's like you know the thing where men are like why are you saying all men and it's like why are you nitpicking at that yeah. just think about the root of what we're trying to say and trying yeah. to explain so also in terms of body positivity why have you gone down that line as well of that's how you thought about feminism yeah I, just, I mean it's such a major one for me I just think like the it, it's I, I was talking to it like you know everyone's got friends and like with sort of like the whole body positivity thing is like such a like taboo subject and it's you know I, I I genuinely maybe this is like a really negative thing to say but I genuinely think there is not one girl not one RA like around our age teenage years that doesn't have some kind of weird relationship with food and you know and it, it stems from body positivity and like shaming and the media and you know I literally as much as I acknowledge that my thoughts are irrational it doesn't I, I it doesn't stop them and it, you know I know the, the media is photoshopped images and I know that it's like not an accurate representation of like bodies yet I'm still like oh but it's quite I would still quite like to look like that yeah. and, and and then I'm not but and it's so frustrating um so it was such an important thing to like acknowledge and talk about mm -hmm. for me anyway because I think yeah I don't think anyone has like a super normal healthy relationship with food no girl our age maybe I'm wrong but from just from like the conversations I have with my girlfriends mm -hmm. like no one feels completely comfortable in in the skin in their skin and in their body like everyone would, would always be able to nitpick at themselves and say oh but I just you know I quite like to I would just change that about myself or like I'd love to just you know smaller this or bigger that or da 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 and it's like why is this happening like it's so frustrating um, yeah, you also hit the nail on the head there when you were like saying that you know it's all photoshopped and you know it's all mm -hmm. fake but then you still you're like oh I still wish kind of there's parts yeah. that I would and yeah. I have that when I'm like I'm looking at these photos and I have it in the back of my head because I'm always like no this is photoshopped or whatever but then I'm like but then why do I still want to look like that knowing that even though I don't want or like even if they, they've had library section or work or whatever done it's still in my head I'm like oh but, and I know I don't want to go I don't want to have work on my body done but yeah. I still am like oh but and it is it's like it, you get angry at yourself for feeling like that yeah. and then even things where you you're like oh no I'm not gonna have a dessert today or I'm not gonna have this or it's like but I don't think men as much have that it's just I guess it's it's obviously it's the media it is the yeah. and it's like it's actually really really sad how I don't know if you found this but at school it felt like it became younger each year that the girls were having an issues with having issues yeah. with their body and even yeah. like I guess it comes that comes with yeah like you were saying like technology and media and things like TikTok and Snapchat and Instagram they're having it that kids are getting it even though there's an advised age you put that can't stop anyone kids are getting it younger and younger and younger and it's it's really difficult to control and navigate and I actually watched a documentary and the suicidal rates for girls is like 10 it's really really low at what age it's the highest and it is down to things like body positivity and due to social media and it's it's mm -hmm. it's scary because you know if we want to one day have yeah if we want to have children one day and 
they were daughters, it's quite difficult to control what they mm. see because at the moment everyone's exposed to everything. Yeah, that I think I remember when I got Instagram. I think I was maybe like sixteen. Yeah, same. I can't even imagine. And it obviously wasn't what it was then as well. Like it wasn't nearly as big then. I can't imagine being that age and being exposed to like Instagram now. That terrifies me. Like there are still, I there are still people. It's like really weird. I don't know if you have this. I feel like there are still people that I follow on Instagram. Like you know your models and your influencers. Like a few that I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna follow them because I quite like it. And then, and I know that it's bad for me. And I know that I'll like stop and look at their photos and be like, hmm, like they look great. And then I know that it's fake and I know that I shouldn't follow them, but it's like, I can't not. And that, I can't, yeah. And at least at, like, I feel like at my age, I feel like at least I know that it's bad. But imagine being 16 and just being like exposed to an app that's just full of like influencers that is so scary yeah well my brother's 14 and his he said that they don't really use Instagram now like because I asked um, my, we were like oh do you want to get it because loads of his friends had him my mom was quite adamant that when his friends were starting to get it that she didn't want him to have it because she was like what for like what are you going to gain from it there's nothing mm -hmm. like what for because I I know it's different generation but she was like your sister didn't have it at that age and then my brother was like yeah no don't like as in there's no need and then everyone all his friends were starting to get it and so I was like oh do you do you want it um and my mom was like oh just uh, like ask him just to see what he, and he was like no, no no I'm genuinely not that bothered he was like we're everyone is more into TikTok and then I I'm really bad at technology and things like that but I got TikTok just to see like last week what it was all about because my mom was like oh it's quite good <laughs> and so I was like okay because she was like you can learn like a lot of recipes and stuff off it and there's some cool like fashion hats and like for, and I like watching like the funny videos on Instagram reels and anyway so what I got it and I was like I was looking and I was like, so the girls who look 20 are actually like in reality 15 now. Oh, and, so scary. and I was looking at what I looked like then. And I, I didn't really get into makeup till quite old and I'm still not fully into it. But it, it uh, yeah, I don't know. It's like even the, the idea like, yeah, exercise, health, everything's really good. But I always think with things like exercise, obviously a lot of people exercise their motivations to look good but for me because I don't really enjoy it it's more to just be healthy and I think yeah. for that age demographic it's not to be healthy it's just to look good and it, it is it's, yeah. it's it's scary it has so scary yeah it's it's yeah. just growing up so much younger that it, it is just like as you said like you know if you put a photo of what I look like when I was you know 14 <laughs> next to someone who's 14 now I it's mind-blowing so in terms of your collection you've I think you've you've seemed to have learned so much about yourself because I guess that's also what your project inherently was trying to do was to learn about yourself so mm -hmm. in terms of you as a person what have you learned about yourself and then also you as a designer whether that be changing paths or whatever what yeah what have you learned God, who have I learned? What have I learned about myself? That's like soul searching, like you, isn't it? <laughs> um, I think I've learned that I'm a lot more like independent than I really thought I was. I say that, but then I also was going to say that as a designer, I feel like I'm more, a lot more dependent, which that doesn't make any sense. Um, but I, I do think like this year, I, I've gained a lot more faith in myself and I'm like okay like I actually like I can do this this is sort of like lumping the two together sorry like who am I as like as a designer and myself but um yeah I don't know I was like okay I, I can actually do this and I like have far more faith in like what I'm doing and like obviously you're so we've all been forced to be so much more independent this year than we ever have had to be before and like when you're not being essentially like spoon fed by the tutors yeah um, it's scary but you yeah I've definitely been like okay I, I can actually do this um but yeah and yeah and also just like what I like that's I mean I spoke about this already quite a lot but like it has really distinguished like the bits of fashion that I like and the kind of designer that I am that was another thing like 
you know, for the first like three years of uni and they're, the tutor's always like, who are you? Who are you as a designer? You know, what's your aesthetic, blah, blah, blah. And that would like freak me out yeah. because I was like, I, I have no idea like who I am. I don't know what my aesthetic is. And I was always like, saw like full theory as this like looming like thing. And I was like, I have no idea. And I was so surprised how, like it all like sort of fell into place and how like I was like okay I do know I know what I like and I know what I don't like and I and I know who I am as a designer now and that was kind of like I I think I wouldn't have got that nearly as much if we'd been in the studios weirdly I think because you're because I was like forced to like do everything myself um but yeah it makes you take a step back doesn't it and like also I guess I, in the studio, sometimes it just doesn't feel like it's reality because it is, like you said, all kind of spoon fed or there's always someone there that can help you. Whereas I think what's really nice that like every single time I've asked this question, I think everyone so far has said they've learned that they're quite independent and they can do it and like the self-belief. And I don't know if that's something that previous years have had in their fourth years. Mm. It probably is because it's like you, it's your graduate collection and I think it all just kind of falls into place at that point in the sense that you kind of know who you are. But I think lockdown in that sense has helped a lot with that. And so my next question is, so in terms of lockdown, why do you think it's been positive for you and what are the negatives? So I don't think you've got as many negatives because of that you've got the machines, which is quite good. But yeah, I don't know. I really struggled without the studio this year. Like, I feel like I've, from watching back what other people have said, and they've been like, oh no, I quite like working at home. Like, give me the option, and I would be in the studio all day, every day, rather than being at home. Like, I've been very, very, very lucky. I've, I've got the machinery, I've got space. I like wangled my way the biggest room in my flat. I never really realized how much I rely on just like the like vibes in the studio that sounds really stupid but just like everyone being there everyone's got their heads down like you you do bounce off each other or just like you know I don't live with anyone else who does fashion and Mm -hmm. I think I've really missed and like having like opinions from other people like that I value everyone else's opinion who does my degree so highly and instead I'm like going off like one of my flatmates does medicine I'm like what do you think of this and she's like I literally have no idea. <laughs> but then also, like you were saying before, so with the tutors, we were having online tutorials once a week. And how did you find navigating that advice with what you wanted to do? Quite tricky. I mean, those the, like weekly tutorials I've also found, like, yeah, they've been weird. I think, I mean, pattern cutting, uh, that's something I think we've suffered personally I feel like I've suffered greatly from not having in-person pattern cutting tutorials like there is no doubt like I've started making one of my like final jackets and there is no doubt that like it's not perfect Mm -hmm. like fit wise there is but it's just there's only so much you know you can do without having like the one-on-one in person like someone physically you know showing you how to like fit a tailored jacket yeah um and yeah, no, the one-on-one tutorials are hard because it's once a week and then for the other six days a week, you you get a lot done in six days and if everything changes a lot or can change a lot in six days. And then you, sh- and then, you, know, you get to a week later, you might've been completely barking up the wrong tree for like six days and you've lost a week, do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, um, and you know, you don't always get on with the tutors and you don't always agree with what they, say and I've definitely had some of that and it's it's hard like you have to really balance like what you feel like you want to do and what you think would get the grades which is so bad but it's true but also I mean you want to be able to like back your collection to the end like if you if what I'm taking to to job interviews I want to be able to like know that I love it and like really be able to sell it rather than being like oh I don't actually like half of it that much (laughs) yeah because to be fair if you're in a job interview and say I'm interviewing you and I was like so Sophie why have you done this collection and why do you like it and if your answer was sheepish or it seemed like well rehearsed because in reality it was just because someone told you what to do or told you oh do this 
Like, for example, mm. the bomber jacket. Someone's like, oh, make a bomber jacket. Someone's like, oh, why did you put a bomber jacket in this? Why is yeah. that? Why does that go with your theme and everything? And you were like, oh, you just made up some sort of answer. Someone yeah. else could tell. So it's, 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 you have to find like a happy medium and take the advice and then also take your, like, take your own path, if that makes sense. But in terms of advice for future students, who will be doing their graduate collection or even people who want to be doing fashion, what kind of advice would you give? Um, don't stress about it as much as I did. Oh my God, like first to third year, I think I just thought everything I was doing was like the end of the world. Like as in, because <laughs> it all feels so important and especially with a degree like ours where I just genuinely think like, this is a massive generalization but I do think we all care so much about it like you don't pick fashion design if you're just like not that fussed about it so you're like you're passionate about what you're doing so obviously you care so much but I just would say to myself or like to anyone just like you know nothing's permanent it's not that deep like you can redo things and like you can have fun along the way as well like I don't think it's like it's a tendency I think with this degree is like because you pick it because you love it and then it becomes more and more like work the deeper you get into it rather than like as I said when you're at school and it's like your fun hobby and I think just like keeping that in mind I have to like constantly remind myself that like I do love what I'm doing and I do love this degree yeah and so I'm like to take a step back and be like okay wait no I, I actually like this it actually does make you unhappy if you're collect if you're not happy with your work like as in I like even socializing and stuff like I'd be really talkative or whatever but I in the back of my head even when I'm talking to my mates and we're having a drink whatever and like having a really good time in the back of my head I still had it irritating me in the back being like but it's not right and I don't like it or even when I've been home it could one of the days it got to like 1 30 in the morning and I was in bed and it was this is going to make me sound like I'm quite um <laughs> a bit I don't even know but obviously overthink but I was in the back of my head I was like oh I'm not ha like I'm not happy with it I'm not happy like it was in the back of my head and I I even like I think that day at dinner I'd been quite quiet and I usually like dominate all the conversations at dinner my mum's literally like to me will you shut up for five minutes <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, and I was like, oh, I, I didn't feel completely happy. And then until I was happy and I was like, this is what I want to do. Like you're saying, like, don't, you, it's not that deep. Like, it's fine. Be yeah. happy with it. That actually changes. It means that your making is going to be better. It's going to feel like you're not doing it for the sake of it. And at the end of it, you're going to be like, I would wear that. I'm happy with this. And I love my collection. And <laughs> um, Okay, so in terms of you said, you know who you are as a designer. So to wrap up, who are you as a designer? And this isn't just reflecting on this collection. It's your four-year experience or who Sophie is as someone who's going to enter the fashion industry. Okay. Um, I am quite a fun, playful, like experimental designer. Um, very like um, structural, I think. Um, I'm sort of, yeah, much more like sculptural. I'm not really a, a drapey person um but yeah very like fabric and color orientated and like you know and construction like construction orientated I think anything that's got lots of seams and lots of like linear sort of like lines and forms that's what I really like you know paneling so for everyone else who wants to follow your journey what socials can they find you on for fashion or if you want to plug your fashion it's up to you <laughs> Um, my fashion Instagram is, I think it's s.waltondesigns. Mm -hmm. I should probably that. But, <laughs> yeah, I'll put the link in the description and then tag you in the Instagram page. But that's the main one. If you'd like to give me a follow, um, you'll see some updates there. <laughs> yeah. And um, thank you so much for coming on. It's been, I think we've been going for, yeah, we've almost been, we've been going for a very long, have we been going for two hours? Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, no. Okay, we've got we've been going for like an hour and a half. Um, so yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. Isn't it in the same Zoom?
<laughs> thank you so much for coming and i'm excited to have you back on so everyone can see how your knitwear has turned out and this skin tight dress i'm excited to see what that's <laughs> gonna look like um but yeah thank you for coming thank you to everyone watching like subscribe follow sophie on s dot walton design i am pretty sure that's what your um instagram account is but yeah thank you for watching and thank you for coming <laughs>